Hello, good day, and welcome to another edition of Sports Check here on Ghana Web TV. My name is Daniel Odro, and today I bring you another exciting virtual interview. You know the times we are in, so unfortunately, I can't bring you a face-to-face -face interview, but this sh should do. Um, over the last several weeks, there's been a lot of talk about how the football transfer market is going to be negatively impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, I've got Oliver Arthur, who is a very distinguished uh, football agent. He is CEO of the Arthur Legacy. He will join me and share his um, opinions and perspective of how life has been under the coronavirus pandemic. I also have Kathleen Arthur, who is the CEO of the Euro Africa Calcio. Calcio. How, how is the pronunciation? Calcio. Calcio. Kathleen Arthur is uh, CEO of the Euro Africa Calcio Academy here in Ghana. Um, she will also bring her perspective on how this has impacted on her job and on her academy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking time uh, to speak to us. Oliver, you are in what? Far away in the United States. Uh, yeah, I tell you, I'm in Atlanta. <laughs> um, uh, it wasn't planned to come and stay in here now, um, but... I came in to prepare for a tournament that we were organizing for Ice Gold, and I got I got I got into this lockdown situation, so I'm locked down here. <laughs> and and the country's borders have been closed to you, so you can't yeah. return. It's closed, then you cannot you cannot get out of of the country. I cannot go back to Italy, my my uh, where I do a lot of my business, and I cannot come to Ghana because it's still not open. Okay, so Kathleen, where are you speaking to us from? From Accra. Oh, okay, so you are in Ghana with me. <laughs> At least yes, we, we can move around <laughs> and do a few things. A bit. Um, <laughs> let me start with you, Oliver. Um, first of all, you have a big agency. You deal with a lot of Ghanaian players and other African footballers. How has the coronavirus pandemic affected your job? <laughs> My job in general, yes, it's, it's really been affected. Um, it has become something, it's something new to all of us that we're trying to adjust ourselves or we're trying to get into it. Players, all of a sudden you have, uh, my company runs almost 22 23 players. You have all 23 players at home at the same time. They all not do anything morning, afternoon, evening. So you have to devise a strategy where you take care of them. You find, you try to get them busy, even though okay. you know, it's not our responsibility to get players busy of what they do. Because normally when they are with the clubs, the clubs take care of it. So it's become, it's a new trend now. We, we are trying to adjust ourselves and trying to. I'm sure that you were not doing uh, virtual um, interviews <laughs> just, right so, so now you know it is it is a new uh, thing for all of us but for for us at other legacy it's we we came together as a company we discussed it and we we devised some strategy to help us uh, okay. we think that three main things that we were doing to help our company um it's we're looking at strengthening the relationship with the players when right. they are playing, they are so busy. They go to training, he comes, he's tired, they come to sleep. So you can't call them every day. You don't have that relationship with them every day. So we've, we've scheduled times now for all of them, and we call them virtually every day, communicate, build a relationship. We discuss right. a lot of a lot of personal issues, a lot of things for the future will affect them. We're also trying to help players who, who lag in some areas of, of right. the game. Um, to improve in those areas. Like I said, uh, somebody using a left foot and now to learn how to use his right foot. Um, right. In areas at home, you try to practice. Because if you're going to stay home for the next two, three months, we sh you should get something out of it. And, and last true. important thing that we've done is, um, in this in this our business, people travel to countries where languages that they, they, don't, they don't understand. There are people traveling to Italy, they don't understand Italian language. And even if you understand, they stay there three months, six months, and still they can speak, but not fluent. So what I did was I bought, um, I had a collaboration with a, an organization called Pimsla. They develop language programs. 
So we have this agreement with them, and now we've got programs across the board. English for those who need English, Italian for those who need Italian, Spanish for those. So they're learning. So in these three months, we're hoping that by the time they come out of this lockdown, they will be fluent, they'll be able to speak the language, and it will help um, when they get back to their field. So for us, we're strategizing and trying to use the time in a way to help the, the kids and the company in general. Well, that's impressive, and that's looking at the upside of this this uh, pandemic. The biggest conversation, though, has been the players taking salary cards and and all of those. Have 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 you had to deal with a situation like that, and how are the players taking it? Yeah, I have. Um, I've dealt with it. Like I think four of my players are in that situation, and you know that the whole thing is. Um, you have to look at the situation and also understand what I try to tell my players is we have frontline workers, medical workers who are going to the field, risking their life to help in this situation. As a player, what are you also doing to help? Because at the end of the day, when your club files for bankruptcy, it affects you also. So we also have to look at the situation and try to help. So one thing that they can help, one way they can help is to accept this pay cut when it comes up. Okay. But the other, on the other end, we are also looking at it where the clubs will not take advantage to cheat the players. Right. Because the clubs that might be in good standing that are okay to go through it, but because they want to increase their profit or to have more profit in, in, in these times, in these difficult times, they also have to take that. So it depends on the club and depends on the kind of players. There are some that are accepted 20%, others that are 40%. There's another boy that it was just a 10%. And the are others that there's no pay cut because the salaries are low already. So you cannot have. So it depends on the player, the country, and the kind of club they play. Okay. So in your opinion, if the salary is very low, then there shouldn't be even a conversation about a pay cut. I, I think so. And I try, to, <laughs> uh, I try to speak to the club to understand that these boys also have responsibilities. Right. They, they should also survive, you understand. They are young players. Our company, uh, we are synonymous with um, young players. We develop young players. So I have a lot of young players who are now coming up. So young players with salaries of less than 2,000, how much are you going to cut? And what, what is that? How significant is that to the club's um, um, losses that they're going to make. So okay. I have that negotiations. And luckily for me, the clubs understand where we're coming from and we are able to negotiate and agree on, on these things. Okay. So before I move to Kathleen, one other question I needed to ask you was, usually at the end of the, the season, in May, June, player contracts will be running down. And if there's, well, if the player the player's contract is ending, then you are, you are looking for new club for him and all of that. Now the season hasn't ended and there's talk that the players must stay on until the, the season ends, which means the usual June ending of their contract is no more. What kind of conversation is going on between your, your, your agency, for instance, the players that you manage and the clubs that they play for? Um. As at now, nothing of that sort has happened. As at now, we've not got into that, that point. Um, players who are playing, for example, in France, they yeah. this, and there's no issue. Italian clubs want to play. English clubs want to play. German clubs want to play. Okay, I have players in Italy. So when it comes to that point where they want to play and it's going to go beyond it, then we can have the discussion. But I think that I don't see where there's going to be a problem because, you know, if the relation with the players, you have very good relation with the players and we can discuss it because he already has a contract. It ends in June. Yeah. We can just extend in three, uh, three more months and then you right. take the same salary you extend for three months. After three months, the player is free. So I don't see um, any difficulties in there unless, you know, the player really has a problem with the club and he doesn't want to... Um, help the club in any way. And one thing you have to know is the player has the power. Because my contract ends in June. If I decide I'm not going to continue, you can't do anything about it. So okay. the players have the power, but we as agents, 
with the relation we have with the club, the relation we have with the players, we try to get them to understand, come to an understanding. When it gets there, I'm sure that we would sail through easily and it wouldn't be too much of a problem. Okay. Let me come to you, Kathleen. You are in Ghana and um, yes. you manage an academy and usually the focus of an academy is to develop young players and feed them to the, either the local market or the foreign market. How have your plans been altered by this coronavirus pandemic? As we all know, I mean, this was a surprise to the whole world. Nobody had a clue anything of the sort was happening. So we had our plans um, lined up for the year, but the pandemic has totally changed everything. I mean, we've, we had to just put everything on hold actually get all the team, all the boys that are in the training to go back home, which wasn't anywhere in the plans that we had for the year. So all our day-to-day -day activities has been affected. And this includes the team that we work with, the coaches, okay. the the technical trainees, the all the, the kids manager, everybody, the scouts is affected, the whole team. So it's had a great impact. And unfortunately, because of the numbers, there's no way we can operate, continue operating and until things change. Right. So it's it's a big it's a big thing. And then for, for the team as well that we work with, we, we've had to look at um finances and all of that, which is also affecting their lives, their families and all. So it's gone further than just putting an indefinite hold on our activities, our day to day activities. Okay, most of your product would be young young people. So yeah. you are in a typical academy setting. You are giving them education, and you are you are, you are you are honing their skills as footballers. Now in Ghana, they are not going to school. They are not playing football. How do you stay in touch with them to ensure that I mean they are keeping fit, they are learning on their own? We've had to go the virtual way, just as we're doing now. So have to talk to them, have to give them guidance online, have to make sure that they're training as, as is required so they don't go rusty by the time we find our feedback and things get better. So that's what we've been doing. It's been phone calls, virtual communication and guidance all through. And we're hoping that we can keep it running a bit in the background mm -hmm. until things get better. Did you have any players who were on the verge of major moves that this has you know yes. scattered everything yes we did yes we did we actually had some players that had to go and once they they arrived in three days they had to be returned because of the pandemic and others that had to move weeks after all of that couldn't happen so it's really it's really changed all plans all plans and it's not just for this place it's going to affect almost for the year i should say so the year comes to an end because we don't know how clubs are going to be ready to move on from now until they get back. I mean, we can't communicate or know the next move. So, so that's, how many that's players, for example, ourselves. how many players, for example, do you have under the Euro, Euro Africa Cultural Academy? We have 23. Okay. We have 23 players at the moment, as of the time that we were going on break. So the numbers keep changing. I mean, depending on who is staying on, who is going back, who is moving out. But that's the number that we were working at the time that we went on break. So these three players you speak of, those who went to Europe and had to return after three days, how how are they taking it? I mean, I'm sure they were looking up, they were looking forward to it, they thought this was their breakthrough. Yeah. How are you ensuring that this doesn't have a psychological effect on them and that an opportunity again would, would, would present itself? Yeah, so we had to, I mean, um, talk to them, engage them, and let them know that. I mean, the situation at hand is not personal. It has nothing to do with them as an individual. But this is a, a pandemic. It's worldwide. This is not something that anybody could have changed. And it's not unique to them. And as um, typical Ghanaians would always associate things with beliefs and what you think. Is it unique? Is it, am I the problem? And it has nothing yeah. to do with that. So, I mean, once the opportunity is there, we'll, we'll go back to the drawing board when things get better and see what our next move is going to be. So it's mm -hmm. difficult to say 
I mean, exactly what's going to happen with them right after. But then as, as the dates go, we, we can address that, depending on what the clubs want. So, yes, there was disappointment. I mean, to, be, to work hard for all the years, waiting for an opportunity, it happens, and then, boom, yeah. you have to come back home due to yeah. this. But at least once it's not their doing, after talking to them, they've all understood they're still training, and then we're looking forward to what happens next when okay. the pandemic is in control. Okay, I'll come back to you, but let me go back to Oliver. So, sure. I, the typical example of what happened, the last couple of weeks, someone there's an agent in Israel who got in touch with me and said, you know, I hear you're a journalist, I want you to help me with some players in Africa and, and the Ghana Premier League, who you think are good that we can buy after the pandemic is over. And his argument was that, there is the general belief that big transfer moves won't happen anymore. The, the big bucks or the big money moves won't happen. So a lot of clubs will be looking to Africa to come and buy players at cheaper, at cheaper prices. I mean, in your experience, do you think that's what's going to happen after the pandemic is over? Um yes and no okay <laughs> and, and right. i explain um okay um the big big players and the big um spending yeah nobody can stop that because i can tell you that there are big clubs who would see a loss of 15 million as nothing there are a lot of the big owners of these clubs who see football as just Aside, aside uh, business, like, you know, just having fun or just giving back to society. So losing 50 million is not a problem. And they will still want to spend as much money to win the league. For them, the trophy is the issue. So um, let's give an example. Thomas Party. Mm -hmm. I hear his value is 50 million. Yeah. Um, Manchester wants Thomas Party. What would, what would, no matter how this event, this uh, pandemic would, would go, okay, mm -hmm. It would not affect um you think his price tag won't change it won't change a bit and trust me there are some clubs the clubs that have reserves clubs that owners have so much money that they would still want to get the players that they need so yes but the, 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 the other argument is that because they have money and the smaller clubs may probably be in financial difficulty they will try and take advantage of them yeah, that's what I'm, I'm going to say that. But the percentage is, it's a very small, um, maybe 10, 20 percent, okay, of, of those matters. But the, the, right. the, the, the majority will still be in the problem you're talking about. Because a lot of clubs might be even filing for uh, bankruptcy. Those who don't file and I would, would be uh, just trying to survive in the, in, in the market. They will look at players who they can get at free agents. They will look at players that they can get um, at a lower price, like you said, coming to Africa to get this player. So it is still possible that African, if we position ourselves very well, it can be a, a, an opportunity for us. It can be a breakthrough for us that we can sell a lot of play because our market value is it's low. We're not, yeah. our price tags are very low when we are doing the first move. So, and but the quality is there. So clubs want to, one of the who are in this difficulty, advantage to come to Africa and get players from Africa. Okay. So it is something that will happen. Okay. Um, so what should Ghanaian clubs or African clubs do differently to attract these kind of opportunities that you speak about? And um, you know, at this moment it's a bit difficult to um, to talk about how it's all going to um, end up or it's going, going to work out. Because we don't know whether the leagues are even going to continue or not. And the losses really come in when the league decide not to, the club, the country decides that they're not going to continue the league. Like what France did. Okay. If the France government is not really going to pump some money into the club, then it means the clubs are really going to lose big time. Okay. Right. That is where the difficulties come. One thing that I know is clubs in Ghana with contacts in Europe, with agents um, contacts that they have, should start positioning them and giving out players that they think are ready for the market, for it to be pushed in. Even though the, the 
everything is on hold, nothing is happening. We are still communicating with clubs. Clubs are still speaking to us. We're still discussing about positions that are important that they might need. Okay. We're doing that and holding on to see how it all um, ends up, how it all um, comes and uh, will all pan out. You understand? Then we would agree on, on 10. So clubs should not sit and wait for the whole thing to come to an end before they start marketing or trying to put the players to. For example, the agent that called you, I'm telling yeah. you that he's doing that not based on um, direct um, information that he has or based on um, a club they did a particular position, but he wants to be open and be throw, right. throw the net and um, wide and see what he can guess and see how important how he can put them in when the market opens. So it's, okay. it's it's a very tricky situation and we don't know how it's all ending up <laughs> at the end of it all. All right. So you're still here on Ghana Web TV. This is Sports Check. I'm speaking to Oliver Arthur and Kathleen Arthur. Oliver is the CEO of Arthur Legacy. He's also in charge of the annual culture ball. Um, unfortunately, this year it looks like it won't happen. Uh, we'll see how that pans out. Kathleen is in charge of the Africa Culture Academy here in Ghana. They produce a lot of young players to both the domestic and the foreign market. Now, Kathleen, you've been here in Ghana. There's a lot of conversation. The Ghana League is on hold. Players are not necessarily paid better here. And unfortunately, there's a conversation about a Ghana Premier League players should take pay cuts because their clubs are struggling. What's your opinion on all of that? Hmm. Very, very, very difficult one. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing all the situations that um, the Ghana football has been through already, and yeah. then the pandemic comes to add on just this early part of the year um I, I would say it would have to be it's it's a game that helps in the community in general gets people to get going at the same time that's where people get their daily bread from so if if we're able to put our, our stuff together i think it would be good to actually get it back and do something sometime later in the year and not totally call it off for the rest of the season but what do you make of the argument about pay cuts for for Ghana Premier League clubs? I've, I've seen Ash go like, like like Oliver was saying earlier. <laughs> some of the pay, <laughs> if if it's almost insignificant, yeah, then correct. if it can be avoided, is better. We we all know how much players are paid in this country. So <laughs> if the cut is massive, I mean, it's it's going to be very tough. But yeah. I mean, based on relationships with with the players what level what plans they have they can work as a team i mean you know what percentage is there will be realistic will be beneficial for the players and the club as well so that either way none of the two is cheated it's fair for each each one of them the club doesn't go down by the time the pandemic is over or the players also don't struggle too much because we need them to be in to have a sound mind to be able to pick up and come back to the field and give us a good play so mm -hmm. these are all things that will affect them psychologically. So it, it needs to be looked at. We just don't have to use them to get the clubs to survive. I mean, okay. they need to be considered in the process as well. What do you make of the argument that government should come to the help of or the aid of these football clubs because they provide a lot of employment for the youth and, and if they go down, then we are increasing the unemployment situation in the country. Do you think the football club in Ghana deserve a stimulus package from government? I, I believe so. I believe so. Because it, it actually has a very large number of um, people in the industry. I mean, it's a long chain. And the number of people that would be affected if it goes down is, is really huge. So um, I think that the government should look at giving them some level of bailout so that they can survive. If not, it will be a big blow. It will be a big blow. So I, I agree to the fact that we should be able to put in something so that there's a survivor over this period and then they can pick themselves up. <laughs> okay. Um, so we've got about five or six minutes to wrap up. Um, Oliver, you, you're highly in Ghana, but what do you make of the Ghana situation? Should, should government appreciate the 
the contribution of football to the general ecosystem and, and, and if you like, the growth of the country. It appears that people don't appreciate the kind of input that sport in general has on the economy. Exactly, and that is that is that is very sad. And I think that um, when you look at other countries, talk about Brazil because that's where we can. Transfers alone um, helps to over uh, three hundred and eighty million just last year. Okay, three hundred and eighty million dollars money coming back into the into the country because of transfers. And this this is something that would would help the economy um, so so much. Um, Ghana is even depend a lot on Western Union people sending money in, and we think right. that is a. So if if government looks, sees football as um, something that would really bring revenue to help the academy, economy, I think that is very important that they they invest and they help these clubs to be on their feet. Um, broadening, broadening it, I think that government should even do more in terms of infrastructure. You know, because if we don't get the system right, if we don't put the measures in place, we will not get the return. That's why people are really not seeing it. But I'm sure that if we're able to put the measures in place, the, the returns in football is, is enormous. Look at South Africa. They did a World Cup. They spent $3, three million. Then they get up making over $6 million. Yeah. You understand? Six, six so billion, sorry. You know, making our six billion. Dollars. So it is it is um, an industry that brings it brings entertainment, it brings a lot of um, joy to the people. Look at the kids, if kids, there's a lot of sports in, in schools, it would help the kids, it help them healthy, it makes them healthy. It's it, there are a lot of advantages when sports is organized well. The problem right. is if it's not organized well, if the structures are not there then we don't see the benefit of it. But really, there's a lot, lot, and lot of benefit economically. OK. So again, would you say government should help them, bail them out? 100%. 100%. Okay. But um, you know, FIFA is already doing something. FIFA is already trying to um, come in to help help the clubs. OK. The same way, once FIFA gets in it, the, the FA should be able to present its, its um, uh, situation to the government to have discussion and then the government the government should come in because it's important if the clubs um collapse or they file for bankruptcy or doesn't work then it's it's, it's a big blow like Carlin said the numbers are huge and it will yeah. affect a lot football went dead for one year in Ghana and it affected vendors it affected um all 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 area you know a That's lot true. of it's a vast um, area that it affects okay um, I'm going to ask you the final few questions. So, Oliver, usually because you deal with African footballers, a major tournament like the Africa Cup of Nations is a big deal. Unfortunately, um, we don't know if it is going to happen or not. We're supposed to go in January for an Africa Cup of Nations. Um, are you expecting CAF to cancel it or reschedule it? If it does, I mean, I mean, does that affect the kind of Gen income generation or revenue generation you had projected that you would come in after the, after the tournament. Yeah, definitely. I, I finally speaking, I see um, it has to be postponed because, for example, we need to play the qualifiers before the the tournament. So if you are not able to play the qualifier, how do you get to the tournament? And now um, the leagues are even in the leagues in Europe are not. Um, they're not sure what they're doing, okay? Secondly, to if the leagues um, do not continue, they have to come in August. Then you want to play your qualifiers at that time also. The two, there's going to be too much pressure on the players. Um, also, I don't see how it's going to happen when there's no busing, um, busing coming out. Okay? And this, we are, we, are, we are hearing that it will come somewhere next year. Okay, right. so... Um, I don't see how it is going to happen. I don't see how we can do social distancing and all the masks, wear the masks and the gloves for an African Cup of Nations. It's, it's going to be difficult. So for me, I think that they have to cancel it and then plan ahead. You understand? So I'm sure that if they push it to June, like it was, um, um, it was the, the previous the previous plan, then I think that it, would, it wouldn't be a problem. Because this wasn't even the initial plan. It was supposed to be in June. Then they had to yeah. change it and everything. So I think that if it goes back to June, it will, it will help. Okay. 
Carlin, mm -hmm. we're running out of time, but what will be your final words? I mean, if you're, if some of your products are watching you, what would you tell them? I'd say that let's let's stay positive. Let's still keep keep going, exercising, and then working out in our own space whilst we are recognizing all the the, the things that we are supposed to do to keep us safe. And then when all comes, that uh, will come out bigger than now, even though this was never part of this year's plan. So we are positive. Let's let's keep it going. Okay, um, I'll give the last word to Oliver. Um, I'll give us two simple questions. So how are some of your players taking the fact that Germany has decided that they are going to resume their football season? It gives it gives hope. It gives hope. They're, they're happy and they, they see that there is still, football will still return. So it gives hope and it, it makes, you know, at least now, um, they're not sure. At the point you will see that everything is going very well, then another um anger mm -hmm. comes in and it changes but one germany is starting it gives hope it tells them that oh yes then it's possible one germany plays it's possible we can also play this so there's 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 a, lo a lot of a lot of hope out there okay so i don't know if any of your players were on the verge of a major move that you were discussing but um, which of your players should we expect to make a major move the when the when the football resumes or the transfer window resumes yeah um now they were um we were, were, were discussing somewhere it would it would have been um after after the market but now that we don't know we don't know how it's all going to be it, it's going to be you understand we don't know whether right. the club because there are clubs that might not have the money to buy new players now so they want to keep the old ones they have so um i wouldn't want to um predict anything that um we, we cannot um put a finger on to say this is how it's going to go but uh, there were some discussions but as as at this at this moment no club wants to discuss our prayer leaving it it's it, it's it's full mm -hmm. to so we'll have to leave it now without going to details about what, <laughs> what we do because it's, it's going to be difficult it's going to be difficult yeah. if, if clubs are able to buy new players then it's difficult for them to release what the ones that they have. They want to keep them and then fight for, for survival in, in the various leagues. All right. Finally, what's, what's the culture ball um, calendar looking like? It's become one of the things we look forward to. Yeah, you know, culture trade ball. We were far advanced with preparation for culture trade. We, we had gotten some very important players to attend. Uh, from Europe and everywhere, but um, we had to cancel it because of the numbers that cannot be gathered, we cannot gather, and also we don't know when the bodies are going to open. So you cannot have the event and only it's this is event mostly for players outside, for players coming from outside. So if the bodies are not, we don't know when the bodies are going to open. We don't know when um, we can have 50, 100 people gathering at, at one place. We don't know how, when the social distancing. Uh, measures are going to and so it is difficult very difficult so we, we've cancelled it and uh, not knowing when we are going to so it's in, indefinite now we don't know when exactly it's going to come back um, depending on the, the situation so we're all hoping that this thing would would go very soon like uh, trump has been saying uh, we <laughs> it, would, it would just go very soon it would, it would just it would just go away and then we can we can have our lives back and then we would, we would come up with when the event is going to happen i'm sure it will like our president of ghana keeps saying this too shall pass thank you oliver and thank you kathleen for your time it's been a very enlightening conversation and hopefully we will we'll get back to the life that we used to know or the life that we we, we know and hopefully things will normalize and football will be back thank you for your time once again um until next time take care bye bye Take care. Bye. Bye.